From the Global Times, I am Mulan. Welcome to the GT Podcast, a one-stop shop for the Global Times take on top China and global news. In today's podcast, President Xi Jinping meets centenarian, former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, an old friend of the Chinese people. Biography author of Kissinger underlined Henry Kissinger's hope for restoration of China-U.S. ties in an exclusive interview with the Global Times. China's Q2 GDP grows 6.3 percent despite challenges. This growth rate is hard won despite falling short of some projections. Russian scholar elaborates why a Russian institute launched the Xi Jinping Thought Research Laboratory to study China more. International University Sports Federation acting president looks forward to successful hosting of upcoming Chengdu Games. Chinese President Xi Jinping met with centenarian, former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger at Diao Yutai State Guest House in Beijing on Thursday. Kissinger is an old friend of the Chinese people who has made historic contributions to the icebreaking in China-U.S. relations. Since 1971, he has visited China more than 100 times. Earlier, Chinese top diplomat Wang Yi also met Kissinger. During the meeting, Wang expressed hope that U.S.-China policy will have Kissinger-style wisdom and Nixon-style political courage, and called on the U.S. government. To change its current China policy, which is now characterized as containment and suppression, it was seen by experts as a clear message Beijing delivered to Washington, given that U.S.-China policy under the toxic environment of its domestic politics has deviated from a rational and sound track record, creating growing obstacles for the bilateral relations. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry and Kissinger have become the latest U.S. officials or high-profile public figure to visit China, following the trips of some U.S. senior officials, including U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, signaling an accelerating resumption of high-level interactions between the two countries, as the bilateral ties have hit a historical low point. Due to a series of issues such as Washington's wrong and provocative deeds on the Taiwan question and their mishandling of the Chinese balloon incident, some experts said the resumption of the series of high-level communication channels between the two countries sends out a positive signal of bringing divergences under control and preventing the bilateral relations from derailing off track. What Kissinger talked about and what he hopes for with China is clearly that relations need to be restored," said Professor Thomas A. Schwartz, a renowned academician and author of Henry Kissinger and American Power, a political biography, in an exclusive interview with the Global Times recently. Schwartz noted that there is the possibility of conflict because the U.S. and China have very different underpinnings in their governmental apparatus. The U.S. has seen itself as a model for the world and has tried to export its system of government and society. China has seen itself as a superior civilization that, in many respects, should be a model for the world as well. But the basic fact that both see themselves that way does not automatically mean they have to come into conflict," Schwartz said. He believed that there are some very different issues between the two countries, particularly on the Taiwan question and human rights and other issues, but almost all of them could be resolved without conflict. I think an intelligent understanding and a perpetuation of dialogue are crucial," he emphasized. He also noted that the difference between U.S. diplomats today and Kissinger is that a lot of U.S. diplomats now have relatively little sense of the broader range of history. Kissinger has a sense from history that terrible things can happen, but American diplomats today sometimes don't recognize the degree of danger that can come from careless diplomacy. 
China's economy expanded by 6.3 percent year-on-year in the second quarter of 2023. The second quarter growth rate fell short of relatively high forecasts from some overseas and domestic institutes, prompting questions about the recovery momentum of the world's second-largest economy and even grim predictions for future growth. However, Chinese officials and analysts maintain that the growth rate is hard won, given downward pressure globally and domestically, and the absence of broad-based stimulus. And that while challenges remain, China has plenty of policy tools at its disposal to ensure the recovery continues to pick up pace, and the four-year target is met. The 5.5 percent growth rate in the first half is the same as our previous forecast. The 6.3 percent growth rate in the second quarter is indeed a bit low, but it is not too low and is basically in line with expectations. Tian Yun, a Beijing-based economist, told the Global Times on Monday. China's economic growth, both in terms of its accelerating recovery and contribution to global growth, is obvious for all to see. The Xi Jinping Thought Research Laboratory was launched in June by the Russian Academy of Sciences at its Institute of China and Contemporary Asia, or ICCA, in Moscow. According to media reports, this lab is the first specialized institution overseas to study Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. We are sure that the more we know our partners and the more objective and correct this knowledge will be, the better it is for the development of friendly and mutually beneficial relations between Russia and China, as well as between Russia and other partners in Asia. Said director of the ICCA Kirill Babayev, when elaborating why his institute chose to establish a research laboratory focused on studying Xi Jinping thought, Russia and China are close strategic partners that should study each other's thought, character, history, and culture. The director said. Noting that nowadays there is a growing interest among Russians in studying Chinese, going to China as tourists, or starting business relations with Chinese partners, he hails the role of the ideas of President Xi in making China a leading 21st century economy and society, and a pioneer of a new type of relations between countries. The ideas of multilateralism, fair treatment of each nation's interests, respect of sovereignty, and non-interference into political systems of various kinds—these are all the values shared by President Xi and President Putin, the Russian scholar said. International University Sports Federation or FISU acting president Leon Zeda believes the upcoming Chengdu World University Games will feature well-organized competitions as well as cultural experiences as he looks forward to the Great Games. Based on the intensive preparation work and the regular exchanges between the organizing committee and the FISU, I expect exceptionally well-organized competitions, very competent and helpful volunteers. Many cultural experiences and lively exchange between the delegations and the organizing committee, as well as the local population, Ada told the Global Times in an exclusive interview. With the fast approaching 31st FISU World University Games, which are set to kick off on July the 28th, 2023, in Chengdu, southwest China's Sichuan Province, Ada said Chengdu is well prepared in all areas, and that he looks forward to attending the Chengdu World University Games and witnessing the success of this sporting event. The acting president said he is very much looking forward to traveling to Chengdu soon and attending all events, including the opening and closing ceremonies, the FISU World Conference, watching many of the scheduled sporting competitions, as well as meeting with Chinese authorities and FISU member delegations. That's all for this edition of the GT Podcast with Mulan. Make sure to follow the Global Times on Twitter and Facebook to stay tuned. You can also check out our podcast, articles, and much more on our website at globaltimes.cn. Thank you.